Uh, Jeff, uh, the Jeff, you know, the, Jeff has been doing this for quite some period of time, and uh, um, he's actually represented the state of Texas uh, in uh, Washington D.C. for a, uh, a panel that is uh, is there to to work on. Um, I'm going to mute a couple of people here that seem to be popping in and out. Um, so, um, and Jeff has built these tools that have helped people understand where to find grips, where to find, you know, special help and opportunities. Um, and as best I know, it's really the, uh, the largest system in the nation that uh, does this sort of thing. And so, Jeff, you kind of started this, um, you know, through an instance of your of yourself being unemployed, right? Right. Yes. Uh, took the, by the bull by by the horns and added to it as was needed because there's a lot of disparate information out there, and this and he's created a a space where you can find it all collected in one place. So. Jeff, thanks for being with us, and we're anxious to hear what you've got to, got to offer. Very good. Well, thank you very much for having me. I, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, during these COVID periods, I don't tend to get up at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> when I do get up at 7, I'm out walking, so I'm not getting my morning walk in today. Maybe I'll get it after this meeting. Uh, so what I want to do today is I'll tell you a little background about me, how I got started doing this, how I got involved in the career game. My background is manufacturing operations, running a light manufacturing facility. Uh, 100 employees or less would be my preference. Um, uh, we will give you a little history about Career DFW and Career USA. We will take a look at the websites live as long as the internet cooperates. Uh, and then uh, I know in the uh, handout that uh, Brian put out, he talked about, I'll sort of share some of my top 10 tips. Well, I've sort of refocused what I've talked about, and I'm going to sort of focus on three areas that I think job seekers need to be focusing on right now. Uh, hopefully, everybody here has done these three things, so it'll be old news to you, but if you haven't, hopefully, you'll pick up some tips along the way. And if you have any questions, please uh, just put them in the chat box if you, as soon as you think about them, and uh, I'm monitoring things. So just FYI, right now, I'm looking at you, but I have a monitor over here, and I have a monitor over here. So if you see my eyes moving back and forth, I'm not being distracted. It's just that I have multiple monitors in front of me. And uh, depending on what I'm talking about, that uh, just makes it easier for me to view things. Uh, so my background, I've got 20 plus years in light manufacturing. Uh, I've been in uh, videotapes. I used to produce uh, VHS videotapes, but for some reason, everybody got fascinated with the little round shiny things with a hole in the middle. Uh, so uh, we did with some CD packaging for a while and eventually had to shut those businesses down. I've been in the bathroom remodeling business. I've been printing press accessories. I've been in high dollar curtains. So, uh, you know, widgets are widgets. It doesn't matter what you manufacture. Uh, it's the people, the processes, and keeping the customers happy. Uh, since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I was able to do that playing Mr. Mom. Uh, the gentleman who was running the group before me, the group had, has had many leaders over the years. They've been around since the late 1990s. Uh, and the person before me got a job and said he wanted to take over. And I think I scratched my face. So he said, okay, Jeff, you're it. So I've been <laughs> doing that since 2007. Uh, and I'll tell you about our programming upcoming at the end of this meeting. So in 2008, uh, I came up with careerdfw.org due to uh, just some issues that were going on in the uh, career community in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, I never would have, I didn't really think that I was starting this right before the economy totally fell apart in 2008. Uh, it was nothing to do with each other. Uh, it just, it was a, a goal that I had and I got it started. Uh, we became a Nexus, uh, Career DFW became a Texas nonprofit corporation July 1st, 2009. It was eight months after we launched the website. And uh, 11 months after we launched the website, uh, I got my notification in the mail. It's not often you're excited about getting a letter from the IRS in the mail, but that day it was pretty exciting to get a letter stating that uh, after filling out a 32-page application with a 110-page application uh, instruction book that I had uh, become a Texas, uh, become a 
501c3 true nonprofit in the IRS census. And uh, it was at that point that the South Lake Focus Group made the very first donation to the Career DFW to get us started. So I didn't accept anybody's donations up until that point. In 2012, I wrote a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. I know Matt had a copy he was holding up a little bit ago. I appreciate it. Uh, all the proceeds from the book go to support Career DFW. It's just, uh, these were just things that I've learned since 2007 or times that I was unemployed going to networking meetings, just little tidbits that I had learned. And I had to sort of do a brain dump. I had too much information in my head and I had to get some of these things off my head, uh, out of my head so I could reload. So I'm about 70% full again. So I don't know if another book is on the way or not. <laughs> Uh, in 2000, also in 2012, I was invited to go to the White House Forum on Job Clubs and Career Ministries. That's a little bit what Brian was talking about earlier. Uh, it was a really interesting program. There were 110 people from all over the United States there, and it was really nice. I was the only person from Texas there. Uh, they had found me about a month before they had called a church uh, over on Central Expressway and was asking, and the church said, oh, you need to call Jeff Morris because Jeff knows everything in the DFW area. So uh, they reached out to me and that's uh, how I got invited to go up there. It was a fascinating time to meet people from around the United States who were doing uh, not necessarily what I was doing, but was doing things for unemployed people, which was really, really nice. And one of the things that I learned while I was there is there is nobody else doing a website for a community like I was doing, like Career DFW. So when I, uh, I was coming back the, uh, in October, it was time to uh, rebuild the website and update it from security issues and some other things. So in October, 2012, we went ahead and launched careerusa.org. I had owned the name for a while, didn't know what I was gonna do with it. Uh, and so we sort of split the website up and I'll point that out when we look at the websites live and I'll show you those things. So uh, how do we survive? We, we survive by volunteers like you. You're the eyes and ears of the, uh, of the website. If you see something, they all say, if you see something, say something. So if you see something and you don't see it on my website, or you don't see it on the website, please let me know. Uh, I'd rather get an email five or 10 times with the same information from five or 10 different people than to have never been able to share great information uh, to help job seekers in the DFW area. We have no employees, uh, no full-time, no part-time. Everything I've done since 2008 has been as a volunteer. I don't take any money out of the organization. The miles that I drive, whatever I have to do, um, that's just on me. But uh, you know, the donations have helped pay for uh, the business cards, the flyers, web hosting, all those things that uh, the business has to do. Uh, that's done, but like I said, everything I've done has strictly been as a volunteer. The other way people uh, help beside, can help beside making donations is, like I said before, all the proceeds from the book go to support Career DFW. At the same time, we started the websites. We started LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn is extremely, extremely important, as you may know, and we're going to talk about LinkedIn a little bit later. Uh, we have currently, if you join the Career DFW LinkedIn group, we have currently over 12,500 members. Uh, so if you're not part of that group, I encourage you to join. I'll show you on the website how easy it is to uh, find us on the do, uh, to do that. And if you want to join the careerusa.org LinkedIn group, you're welcome to do that also. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, Career DFW Facebook page. Uh, normally, uh, all the presentations that I give are live on Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook every time we go live, your phone will give a little buzz and you'll be able to just watch us on, our, on, the, on your phone or you can go back and watch presentations that have been done before. In addition, uh, you can subscribe to our Career USA YouTube channel where, excuse me, I post all the uh, workshops that speakers allow me to post. And like this workshop, I will post up there later this afternoon. So let's take a look at the two websites. All right, let's see here. Oops. Yep. So here is the uh, Career DFW website. Um, let me move a couple things around here on my desktop so I can see it. Okay, uh, it's got a couple different headers across the top. Don't let the different colors uh, uh, thrill you here. Uh, at the very top here, there's a career tip of the week. I change it every week and I'll talk more about that in just a couple minutes. Uh, when COVID started and people were trying to find networking groups, at the beginning, 
there were only a couple networking groups. Uh, I had my Friday networking group had, we had gone live right at the very beginning of COVID. And when everybody started shutting down, we were one of the few groups that were doing it. Uh, so I had a calendar called webinars, teleseminars, radio, TV shows, and I moved this uh, little banner to the front page. So if you're trying to find other groups that are meeting online, if you click here, we'll open up that calendar and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Uh, I also created a, uh, one page little flyer called I just lost my job. What do I do? So I uh, click here for help. If you click there, it'll take you to a one page flyer. It's got checklist on what you should do first, second, third. It's got some really great resources just to get yourself started. So if you know anybody, I mean, they've been what there's been 800,000 people getting laid off every week or new filings. If you know somebody new around the country, this isn't just in the DFW area, but if you know somebody uh, if you click on that, it'll uh, come up with a great little one page resource. Uh, all right, underneath that, uh, I thought it was important that everybody know that you're not the only person who's unemployed. So uh, I put a little count on here and that will change every time you update to a new page, it'll show you who's on the website. So uh, I just thought it was important to do that. Uh, right here in the middle, career DFW training, I thought was very important. Uh, I recently modified the website to include this. These are webinars and uh, teleseminars that uh, Career DFW was sponsoring and putting on. There's a lot more out there, but the ones that uh, I'm directly related with, you can click here, you can open up the box and it will take you and show you uh, anything that we're doing. And you can see what we have coming up here. If you wanna join the Career DFW LinkedIn group, you can click right over here. You see how it turns to a little hand. Oop, I got an update, it should be 12,500. Uh, if you click right here, it will take you to the join now page. If you're not a member, if you are a member of the group, it will take you to the discussion page. If you want to join the career USA group, you can click right here. I will tell you, I will look at your profile and I would hope that your profile is mostly complete. If your profile is really incomplete, I will reject you. Uh, you used to get a message, but LinkedIn has changed that. Uh, you don't get a message anymore. So, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm checking those at least once a week to get people uh, into the group. If you're interested in buying a copy of the book, you can click right here. It'll give you a couple different options on how you can do that. If you'd like to donate, you can click right here. A couple options how to do that via PayPal or mailing a check in. And so that's the, the main part of the front page. So now thing I want to do is I want to show, to show people the calendar. The calendar is really the biggest thing that gets used on the Career DFW calendar on the website. There's a couple different ways to view things. We're gonna look at the everything calendar first. At the very, very top, you're gonna to see that uh, there's instructions here on what everything is. I know guys, we don't tend to read any instructions unless we're desperate, but uh, all the color coding, what every little button does is up there. So here's what's going on in the DFW area this week for the unemployed. And as you can tell, there's a lot there. And don't forget to scroll down because you're gonna find things that are happening in the evening too. So the gold color is the current day that we're on, Tuesday the 13th. The red line shows us exactly where, what time of day we're on. Uh, and you can go click on anything you want. So uh, this I'm clicked on the gold event, which is what we're doing. I'm promoting, uh, you know, talking about Career DFW, Career USA. Uh, and there's other events that are happening throughout the day. Here's an online session that's happening today about LinkedIn. Here's the Frisco Career Canvas Workshop you can click on. And all the information is there. I mean, you'll have all the details along with web links on how to get things. I will tell you this, it says here more details. There are never more details. I will put everything in there that I know uh, and just make sure you scroll down. I mean, that's the whole key. If you scroll down, you'll get all the details. Uh, this copy to my calendar, if you happen to have a Google Calendar, uh, you can click here, and if you have your Google Calendar open, it will put this event on your calendar, on your uh, Gmail calendar for you, so you don't have to uh, sit there and re-enter the information that's in there. So you can tell there's a lot of things going on. Here's a job fair that's happening up this Friday for those people who live in Plano. You can click there, and you get more information if you go to the website right there. All right. Uh, so let's say it's Saturday and you're trying to figure out what's going on next week. If you click here in the upper left hand corner, you'll see this little blue arrow. If you click on that, here's what's already scheduled that I know about for next week. 
And you can click again, you can get to the following week. You see Halloween's coming up in a couple of weeks. If you click back on today, it will take you back to today. If you wanna view it by the calendar week, you can always click right here and do that. Uh, moving across the top here, there's a print feature. Uh, yes, you can print this calendar out, but be very, very careful. I would print any, I would preview anything you wanna print because uh, with all the information that's on here, you will kill a lot of trees if you're not careful. There's about eight or 10 options of what you can print with this, without this, with a map, without maps. Uh, just be very, very careful what's there, uh, you know, to do before you do it. This is the week view. For those people who have a Google Calendar and use a Google Calendar, you know there's a one-day view and a two-day view. For some reason, they do not give that option to this calendar. So I'm really disappointed, but I'll show you a way around that. Uh, the month view is a really waste of time because as you can see, it'll just say there's 23 more events today. So it's really <laughs> skip that one. But the agenda view is very, very useful because what it will do is it will put the very first event for the day and will list everything in chronological order. Now you're gonna see here that there happens to be, here's the 7.30 meeting, then here's another one in purple, and then here's another one in gold. Well, what's happened is because originally the calendar, the blue event were career networking meetings. And you can click, you can open it up, and you can get all the information of where they meet. Uh, in this case, you've got to contact Brian to be uh, <coughs> invited and to find uh, the location of the super great breakfast place. Um, I won't mention it for those people who are online. Um, so you, you can, you know, you find that out. So then here is the event that I loaded in purple. So this is in webinars, teleseminar category right here that shows the webinars that people could go to. And then the third one is this just, this gold one here reminds me where I need to be on my calendar. It's sort of like my personal calendar that I've stuck on here. But you can just find that there's groups throughout the day. When you see that there's two different groups listed here, uh, the same thing, it's because this is when the engineering technical focus group was meeting in person. And I wasn't going to delete those events because hopefully we'll get to meet in person again in the next six months. But for those meeting online, here is the online information along with the Zoom information. So that's why it's there on two different calendars. So you'll see things duplicated throughout. And you can zoom down and you can scroll down and you can find other events. Like I said, it has all the exact same information on there. If you want to add things to your uh, calendar, you copy to my calendar. Like I said, there is no more details. Uh, everything that I know is right there uh, that you could do. And I guess if you are not aware, I know this, I just got the email yesterday. Uh, all the Yahoo groups will be going away as of the middle of December. Uh, you will no longer be able to use Yahoo groups to email people with. As you know, now all that's down, all it is now is a email group, or that's, they turned all the other stuff off last December. And uh, as of this December, it's all gone. So every, all the Yahoo groups out there are going to have to find a new way to communicate with all the career groups that are out there. All right, let me point out one more little important button over here, this little drop down arrow you see. What that will do is that will show you all the different uh, levels or all the different uh, pages that are part of the calendar. So we can go and we can turn some stuff off and we're just going to look at, we'll leave job fairs on and career events and we'll turn that off. Let's turn these things off here. So now what you're seeing is you're just seeing special career, special workshops that are happening and job fairs that are happening that happen to be on the calendar this week. So here's a way how to eliminate a lot of stuff that's on the calendar and make it more useful. And if you go back to the week view, you're going to see, hey, there's a lot less information on here. It makes it easier to view. You can always go back and add something. You want to see all the webinars that are happening. You can click here and you can get all the events that are happening that way. You can turn off, you know, special events or things like that. So that's just a way to turn things back on and off. Uh, to me, it's very handy just because of the amount of information that is on the calendar. So let me go back to the home page here on the calendar. And so if you were to go to, this is the main home page here, we were looking at the everything calendar. You can look at only job fairs or just special workshops or just the networking groups or just uh, 
you know, the professional organizations. If you do that, you only will see that one layer and you cannot add things back in. Um, one of the things I also want to say is that uh, I'm sort of surprised that the calendar worked on my program today because at one point it didn't want to show up on Google. I use Google Chrome is what I'm using and the calendar wouldn't show up, but if I went to Firefox, it showed up. So if you don't see the calendar, it could be try a different program, you know, Firefox, Bing, uh, or uh, uh, Chrome to, to make it pop up. So that's the calendar. Um, Craig saying, I'm not seeing his multiple screens. Is everybody else seeing his screens in calendar? Jerry said, seeing his calendar. Okay, so hopefully Craig is just maybe the only one having a little issue. All right, so that's the calendar function. The next page over, the next tab over is the group tab. And here on the group tab, this first list here, these are all the networking groups that are in blue, the aqua color, and these are all the people that offer workshops like the career uh, transition workshops that have like an eight or 10 week program that take you through a workbook. Uh, there may be a small charge. If, there's any, if any of these events have a cost, we will, uh, list that on the website. So anything that, that costs you money, I will make sure that you're notified of that. Um, if uh, you're looking for a professional organization, and I highly recommend that people check out the professional group because uh, we'll go to it here. Uh, this is 18 pages long of professional groups in the DFW area. So Whatever you do, there's a professional group, find them, go there, network with these people, because if they like you and they know you, they're gonna offer you a job before they offer it to somebody else. So be sure, and I'll list other things on here. There's Geek Meet on here. I have uh, 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 Toastmasters listed on here. Uh, you know, that you can, it takes you to their website for you to find more organizations that are just meeting around. So check out any of these. Uh, JCs are listed here. Just, you know, whatever you can find. Find these groups. This is where you're going to find, you know, and I'll talk about, you know, networking. This is how you're going to find your next job is, you know, who you know and who knows you're looking uh, for things like that. And uh, then if you're looking for your local TWC office, I have a map here that will take you to that. And uh, if you have any you'll find email addresses on almost every page. So if you find something that's not correct, if you find a misspelling, if you find here's an event, here's a group that's meeting that it's not on your list, I'd be glad to add it on the list. I mean, I've had groups reach out to me. I don't know if I qualify, uh, but I'd like to be on your list if you'd have us. And it's like, sure, I want to put all this information on here to help whoever I can. All right, the About Us section, it's weird to put it here in the middle, but the reason it's in the middle is that this is the end of the website. The Resource tab, Tip of the Week, Job Board, and Humor section are all on Career USA. So if you could click on one of these, it will launch a new window and take you to Career USA. So uh, it was never my intent to have my picture on the website, uh, but uh, this is the only, you know, this, the website wasn't about me. It was about helping unemployed people and helping anybody in job search and career transition. So here's just a short little, uh, I had a speaker once come to my Friday meeting and, and didn't, he's going, well, why did you start career DFW? I don't understand it. So here's just a little brief overview of, of what's gone on with lots of different links that you can click on to find information out. If you want to find out more about my trip to the White House, here's a link here about that. Uh, I've kept a running blog of our history. This you said we did. This is when you send me those nice little comments. Thank you very much for putting the website together or whatever. And when it's 11 or 12 o'clock at night and I should be sleeping, uh, this is where I go to to remind me. And it's the little, you know, little thank you notes that you all send me. Uh, I've got our mission statement, our goal. Uh, we have been in the news a couple of times. Uh, and I've got those there. And if you have a website and you want to add links, I've got a whole series of buttons here that you can uh, click on. And then here are a, a couple of email addresses. Uh, right now, me, myself, and I, we handle everything. So you can select any one of those three, and one of the three of us will be sure to uh, uh, take care of it. Uh, I do a lot of the website updating on Saturdays. So just uh, FYI, if you send me something, it could be through the week before it happens. So that's the Career DFW website. 
Career USA looks a lot like Career DFW. Now I'll go back and just sort of happen to point this out. This is sort of one of my favorite things here, is that when you build a website for you, you get to pick whatever color you like. I happen to like the color orange. I drink a lot of Fanta, a lot of sun-kissed orange. So, you know, I got to pick, I did not go to UT. I did not go to University, Oklahoma State University or any of those things. Uh, I just like the color orange, okay? But I didn't think that when I built Career USA that I had a lot of choice, so I kept it sort of red, white, and blue. But it's the same format, career tip of the week in the middle. I just lost my job. What do I do now? Uh, you'll see there's a lot more people currently on the website, but we'll see as we update the page because I loaded this page about an hour ago. But uh, everything's sort of the same. You, uh, you can join the LinkedIn pages over here on the right-hand side. Uh, if you're interested in copy of the book, you would like to donate, all that information's on here. Um, so let's go to the group tab. And on the group tab here, the difference is instead of having a calendar of events, these are groups that I have found around the United States. So uh, if you clicked on Dallas Fort Worth, it would take you back to Career DFW. Uh, I have found, somebody asked me to find some groups in the Houston area for them. I went and did that. I don't know if they're current. This is the list is by from a couple years ago. The uh, Kansas City list I know is updated. They updated every quarter and I'm on their mailing list. So every time they updated, I updated here. Uh, those Lutherans, I tell you what, up in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, I think every church, some of those churches up there have two networking groups that meet there on a weekly basis. So uh, there's a, if, if you live in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, there's plenty of networking going on up there. Uh, the New Jersey area, the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Uh, I list San Antonio on here sort of as a joke because as far as I can tell, there is only one networking group that meets once a month in the San Antonio area. I don't know if any of you ever bought those little cherry tomatoes that come in the red or yellow bottom with the clear top. Well, a gentleman from my Friday group got a job down in San Antonio working there. He works at the facility as an executive. And after about three or four months being down there, he emails me going, Jeff, uh, I really appreciate your networking group. I wanna be able to offer the same thing and reach out to those people here in the San Antonio area, but I can't find any networking groups. Can you find any? And I went and did research and I couldn't find any. It's just sort of amazing. So, you know, we're very lucky here in the DFW area to have people like Ryan running this group every Tuesday morning and the other leaders uh, who run you know, South Lake and all the other groups. It, this is a very unique uh, area that we live in. So if you uh, know of other uh, networking groups in the city that maybe you came from or you know of other groups, please let me know. I'll be glad to add as many cities on here as I can to help people outside the DFW area. All right, the resource tab. The resource tab is really the bulk of the website. Uh, this has probably six or 700 articles on here and uh, this career files, this is like a giant file cabinet. So back in 2008, Google, Google was around, but it didn't really index as many kind of good career stuff as you can go now and find out there. But I've got hundreds and hundreds of articles here. I just got laid off. What should I do first? You know, how to put together a good cover letter, a T cover letter. What should I put on my business card? Resumes. I think one of the biggies that are on here, I've got hundreds and hundreds of interview questions with the answers. So when somebody asks you a certain kind of question, it would sort of prompt you, this is the kind of answer that we're looking for, behavioral interview questions. If you ever have an interview with the American Heart Association, I think they do something called a SIDS interview. I happen to have those questions and uh, somebody went and put together their answers and they're all listed on the Career DFW web. They're all there if you're interested. But there's just tons and tons of uh, career files there. Just click on career files and we'll open that up and you can find that information out. I've got a list here of tons of different websites that people uh, have recommended over the years. Uh, I'm constantly updating it. People keep sending me new articles, new websites with other things. Uh, so if you're just looking for you know, little niche websites or uh, job boards by profession, this is sort of interesting. I've got 20 professions listed and uh, uh, little niche websites that you may or may not have ever heard of. Uh, if you think you want to start your own business, you know, you can click here. I've got several different uh, options, uh, including one of the websites happens to have a test to see if you have the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and um, if you do that. And if you're a veteran, I've got resources for veterans. This is something I've added in the last couple of years after being invited to 
a couple of the veterans workshops around the uh, city. So I've got veteran stuff and I'm, uh, and that, that tends to get a lot more updates because people are finding it to do uh, more information. Uh, just over here on the right hand side, and this is true on both Career DFW and Career USA. If you want to go to LinkedIn, this will immediately take you to LinkedIn. The F will take you to the Facebook page, Career DFW Facebook page. Uh, Twitter is inactive. Uh, Instagram is pretty much inactive. Uh, the red arrow, this will take you to the YouTube channel, and I'll talk more about that at the end of this presentation about where all these videos are located at. And then if you're interested in making a donation, the P is for PayPal. Uh, the little envelope means you want to get the address so you can mail it in to me. So, or uh, mail it into the address. So that's how uh, you'll find these on most every page we're on. All right, the career tip of the week. Uh, I really encourage people to read this every week because I think this is a little V8 moment you read and go, wow, that was simple. I should be applying this to my job search every week. So this one, I, I find this one very interesting this week. I don't write most of them, occasionally I do, but I love this one, how candidates are using backdrop, background props to stand out in a video interview. So how many of you, when you're on doing a Zoom call right now or on you know, Meetup or whatever you're using to, for video thing, I know I'm fascinated. I look at people's backgrounds. I wanna see what's hanging in the wall. I wanna see, you know, the, I see the plaques behind Brian's. I see some of his books on his bookshelf. You know, I'll pop his picture up full screen so I can see it and take a look at it. Cause I wanna, you know, I'm sort of interested. I remember there was some lady who, I saw they had all these medals hanging and her husband was a triathlete, was a, uh, did Ironmans and stuff. And so, you know, it's just another topic. So think about every week, I put a new career tip of the week up. It goes every Saturday afternoon, a new tip will be up there. They're not long reads, but hopefully you'll read, you know, you'll catch out something, you'll catch something you're interested in. Over here on my right hand side, underneath archive tips, these are my favorite tips. These are ones that uh, you know, if you're just getting started reading, these are ones that I think you should really, you know, check out first. I used to talk about name tags a lot, but since we're all stuck at home, I think everybody at home now knows who you are. So you don't need to be wearing a name tag around the house. Uh, but I guess it is optional if you feel like you need to. But for, you know, these are my other tips. I think they're really good. And if you want to go back and see all the tips, you can go back all the way back to 2009 when I started doing a career tip of the week. They're all listed there. All right, uh, the next section over is the job tab. I have a career board on the website. This is the only place you're gonna see a login screen. And the only reason you have to log in is because I wanna make sure you're posting a real job. If you're posting, if you start posting a real job, I need to be able to block you. And I've had, I have had to block uh, certain posts in the past. Uh, a couple of things I wanna point out. Uh, job boards only stay po jobs only stay posted for 21 days and then they automatically go away. So you're not going to find you go to some websites the job was up there from six months ago. 21 days of the second, the computer automatically hides the job from being posted anymore. Um, so here is apparently we've been found. Oh, let me go back up here. So currently there's 86 people online, and there's three job posters. So three different people right now are posting jobs here. Uh, and you'll see that here on the, on the website. So the most current job is currently here. Uh, apparently we've been found outside the DFW area. So here's Phoenix, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, jobs are all over the place. Uh, let's scroll down. You'll see the first 30 jobs. Currently there's 489 jobs on the website. Uh, like I said, every 21 days, the numbers were changing. The easiest way to use this job board. I don't like this job board. I'm hoping to replace it. I haven't found the technical people to be able to do it as a volunteer. I found an order, I found a business that will do it for $8,000, but I don't have $8,000 to spend on a new job board. So I'm just sort of stuck with this. Uh, do not use the search feature. It doesn't work. There's some things that are broken on here, but the best way to search is if you just click on this filter by category and you open it up and you will see on here that there's one accounting job. Here is seven customer service jobs. Here is five engineering jobs. If you click on that, you will just see those particular jobs that are there. That's the easiest way to use a job board at this time. Um, like I said, the job board, this job board was written by uh, some people in Russia and I refuse to uh, pay them to go in and fix things because I don't want them to 
leave a back door. My websites have been hacked twice. And once it took me two weeks over Christmas to unhack it. So uh, I'm very protective of, of what I have right now. All right, so let's see here. All right, so uh, the next section over after the job board is the humor section. Uh, when we rebuilt the websites in 2012, I asked them, hey, can you give me a pair of eyeballs, a big nose and fuzzy eyebrows? But we only could get the eyeballs on there. We could get the nose and the, the uh, eyeballs and the glasses up. But, you know, you're only going to see this Monday through Friday between 8 and 5 on a work day, Monday through Friday. You know, what it's saying is, hey, you should be out looking for a job right now. Why are you on this page? But if you need to, you can scroll down. You can find cartoons and jokes and other things that are happening. So uh, um, this one's not bad. You'll be relieved to know that I have fired Alex Liu and our director of quality control. So uh, the severe, you know, but uh, there's just all sorts of jokes. I'll show you my favorite one here. Let's see here. So don't spend a lot of time here during the week, but uh, on, you know, when, when you need to on the weekend, you can, uh, you know, or at nighttime, if you need a little pick me up, uh, you know, you're welcome to, uh, you know, check out this. There's some other funny things on here, jokes, cartoons, some web blogs and stuff. So that's that. Uh, the about us section is just like career DFW. In fact, a lot of, if you click on things, it will launch career DFW. So just remember the two sites are intertwined with each other and, uh, so those are the two websites. Any questions about that before I move on? Questions, I don't see anything. All right, so let me go back to, here we go, go back here. Uh, so just as a remember, uh, there is, we don't collect any personal information. On a lot of websites, you have to create a login and everything we don't request at all. We want you to be able to just get everything. The only time you have to log in is if you want to post a job. Anybody is well, you're welcome to post a job if you'd like to. Uh, there's no cost to use either of the websites. They're totally free. We're survive, you know, we survive on donations. So, uh, you know, just, just, you know, remember that I don't want your personal information. Like I said, my websites have been hacked twice. I don't want to be responsible for that, uh, to do that. Okay, so what I wanna spend the rest of this time in, on is three areas to focus on your job search. Uh, this used to be my top 10 area, or I would just share some top career tips, but well, since COVID has started, uh, I, I sort of came up, you know, in Career DFW, we sort of came up with three things that I think uh, uh, that people just need to sort of focus on. I think that uh, just three big areas, and that's what Career DFW has been doing here. So uh, the three areas that I think people need to focus on, number one is your resume. You've got to get your resume really ready to go. And if you spend, you know, when you first get laid off, the first thing you don't do is start applying for jobs. First thing you need to do is spend some time on your resume and make sure you've got it really all filled out. Second thing is you've got to get your LinkedIn profile ready to go. We'll talk about that. And the third area is you've got to practice interviewing. Um, and so we're going to talk about those. Those are the three areas that I want to talk about today. So one of the reasons that I can, these three areas I'm very concerned about, or I, I just spent a lot of time is that when COVID started, uh, I reached out to some experts. And so every Tuesday at one o'clock, we do a LinkedIn seminar and I have four experts talking about LinkedIn and they each talk about LinkedIn from a little bit different angle. A lot of, you know, Terry Sullivan. He's one of them. You may know Kurt Vondemotter, who's an executive recruiter. He's one of them. Uh, Ruth Lipsky, who teaches LinkedIn at Lee Heck Harrison. And uh, the fourth one, the name, uh, Locke Alderson, uh, who, who speaks at many different webinars. So, you know, I have four experts who are talking about LinkedIn, each from a different aspect. On Wednesdays, uh, Mark McDonald, who leads the practice interview team, and Walt Glass, who does the interview success workshop, up until COVID, we were meeting every Wednesday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, or Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, doing interviews. Now they're doing interviews virtually, but I asked the two of them to put together a program or something on interviewing. And so they have, they put together a 13 session workshop. Uh, and this week will be on session number 11, but I'll show you, you can go back and watch any of the other sessions. Every Thursday we talk about resumes. So. 
I've got a resume expert. She brings in guest speakers and they share different tips every week. And we actually review one or two resumes live online. And then my Friday uh, North Dallas Career Focus Group, we bring speakers in three out of every four Fridays of the month. So hopefully there's a great topic that can help you out. Uh, if you're interested, all the information is on the Career DFW Facebook page live, and it's on the Career DFW calendar uh, that you can check those events out. So the first area I want to talk about is resumes. So one of the things I found is that when people get unemployed, they will spend, I remember there was this one lady and she'd come to my Friday group and uh, she just, I mean, it was like three, oh, I'm still working on my resume. Well, have you applied for any job? No, 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 I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to get my resume right. You know, you can go ask 10 different people and you're gonna get 15 different answers what your resume should be because everybody wants their res your resume done a little bit differently. So my, what I preach is you need to have a master resume. You should have a 10 or 15 page resume. Everything you've ever done, I mean, everybody here is executives. You should have a resume with everything you've done since high school and include high school jobs if they were important. And you wanna make sure you include the boss's names, all dates, addresses, eight or 10 or 15 bullet points uh, on underneath each one of those things. And you put all the details there. And then once you do that, when you see a job, you take that master resume, save it as, you rename it as the job, what, however you save stuff, and then start deleting everything that's unimportant. If they don't ask for it in a job description, you don't share it. Because why? Because all your resume is just a hook. You're just trying to bait somebody to get them to call you up or to send you an email. So if you start listing all these other things that you've done, and yes, everybody here has probably done a lot of really great things over the years. If it's not on the job description, they don't care. You can talk about it when you're there in person, but the whole object of a resume is just to get that phone call. So like I said, you wanna make sure you customize every resume you send out. I do not think you should you know, have a generic resume uh, and you've got to keep to the details that are in the job description. Very, very, very important. Uh, you want to make sure that every bullet point has some substance to it. Okay, I've read a lot of a lot of resumes, and a resume sounds like a job description. Well, I had to do this on Mondays. I did this on Tuesdays, and this is what I did with customer service, and this is what I did with sales. But it didn't have any quantitative numbers. The best thing you can use is dollars. The second best are percentages, and the third best are just numbers. I remember I was talking to a lady, and she said, well, I'm just an admin. I just answer the phone. So I said, so on average, how many phone calls do you think you get a week? And she thought, well, maybe four to 500 phone calls a week. I said, and how many people do you have to distribute those phone calls to? Oh, there's 24 people that I have to send. I said, there you go. You answer 400 phone calls a week and you distribute it on average and you distribute it to, to 24 different people. That's something that people can then understand the scope of what your job is. Do not just blindly send out resumes. Uh, I, that's a mistake uh, because you're sending out, you don't know what the company is looking for. You don't know what that person is looking for. So if you're going to send a resume out, you only want to send a resume out when you've had a discussion with somebody or you've seen a job description so you can make sure you customize it. Do not post your resume on LinkedIn. <clears throat> now, I know they've changed it. It used to be there was a file section towards the top that you could post all sorts of stuff. Now I think they've changed it where you've got to post it to a particular job. But don't post your resume on LinkedIn because what are you posting? You're posting your generic resume and people aren't going to understand you know, you may have something listed and it may not click with somebody because you didn't put it in the right terms. One of the things I highly recommend is a one page bio. I think you all have talked about those here. Uh, I think a bio is extremely effective. You know, that's what you send out blindly. It just tells people who you are at a high level. Uh, if you, I don't, have you all had Mena Brown speak at the group? Yes, no, okay, I guess not. I don't see, I see a shaking head by. Yes, we've, uh, in the past, we haven't had her recently. Okay, uh, I just think she's she's great. I know she doesn't do as many talks, any speeches anymore as she used to, but I highly recommend, you talk about books that you should have in your library. Uh, this B Sharp, make sure it's the second edition. The second half of the book has got like 30 different bios in it. 
and different examples and how you can reword things and what you can do. Uh, and I've told Minna every time I do a presentation, I always promote her book because I just think it's, uh, <clears throat> for somebody in job search, this is what you send out when you're gonna have a networking meeting. This is what you're gonna send out before you have a Zoom call with somebody as a networking. This tells somebody who you are from a high level. It doesn't get into the weeds and just gives them an idea. And if you're meeting somebody at Starbucks, then they know what you look like. Uh, as long as you make sure you put your picture on there and not Brad Pitt or somebody else's picture. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about ATS system, resumes and when you fill things out online. I will tell you this, there's a speaker who uh, has come down to the DFW area from the Minneapolis St. Paul area and her recommendation is don't waste your time applying for a job online. You are wasting your time, okay? You wanna network is how you find a job. But if you do fill something out online with an ATS system, do not use any special characters or special formatting. So you want to make sure your resume is a plain text file or a rich text file uh, because any special characters will throw things off. Even the fact you could go and put Jeff Morse comma MBA, the ATS system may call that MBA is my last name. So you've got to be real careful how things are being pulled in. You want to make sure if you're using, if you upload a Word document, that there's no headers or footers because the LinkedIn, uh, there's not an ATS system that will recognize those kinds of, uh, that information. And you wanna make sure that your keywords align to the job description. And we'll talk a little bit more about keywords here in just a second. Uh, you wanna make sure you focus on results and accomplishments. I sort of said that, you know, what kinds of dollars, what kinds of percent, uh, you know, what kinds of numbers that you, can you talk about? Because that's what sells. Telling me what you did doesn't sell me. How you did it and your results is what makes me want to go, ooh, I need somebody who can do that. Make sure you use action verbs to start each bullet. I'm not looking for somebody who's dedicated because everybody's dedicated. I'm not looking for somebody who's detail-oriented because everybody better be detail-oriented. There's a bunch of words that you just shouldn't use anymore, uh, but use, utilizing and the start of each bullet with an action term, if you can do that, really makes it more exciting. And in the middle third, you want to put numbers and percents and dollar signs, if you can, in the middle third of your resume, because your eye is naturally drawn to that. If you put the number at the very end of a comment or at the very beginning, it tends to get lost. It stands out more in the very middle. Uh, keep your resume simple. The job of a resume is to whet the appetite not to provide the recipe. You're not, you're not giving them all the details. You're just trying to get that phone call, like I said before. Um, referral, so here's one of the things where if you go and fill something out online, you have a two or 3% chance of getting a phone call. But if you have a referral, if somebody can refer you in, you've got a 50% chance of getting someone to call you. So if you see something online, if you see a job posting, Network your way in. If you can get somebody to get that resume to the HR department for the hiring manager, you've got a much better chance of getting selected. All right, a few common resume mistakes that uh, we see all the time. Number one, spelling and grammatical errors. This is an automatic, you're out. Uh, you know, I mean, I've, a lot of recruiters, I think 78% of recruiters that I've talked to uh, and that have been surveyed will tell you that as soon as they see a misspelling, or a grammatical error, they're, they're done. Uh, you've got to make sure that future, that past jobs were in past tense. So don't say you analyze, don't say that you analyze data when that's something you used to do because you're no longer employed. Make sure it's analyzed. Uh, if you use an unprofessional email address, I mean, that's not common here. I think most people are going to have a fairly common. Hopefully you have a separate email account just for your job search, separate from your family or personal account. Uh, you know, and if need be, if you don't have one, get one. Uh, if you've got a AOL account that tells people you're OLD. So, uh, you know, get a Gmail account, get something that's uh, up to date, more current. Um, like I said here, fair to demonstrate and quantify results. Like I said, every bullet point you need to, you need to quantify what it is you're doing, demonstrating what you can do. Too many buzzwords, we've sort of talked about this already, overused phrases, you know, uh, detail-oriented, 
uh, dedicate it, those kinds of terms you want to stop using. Uh, if your format is uh, too elaborate, you know, when, when you're submitting a resume online, it needs to be very plain. If you're submitting a resume to a person, yes, you can have a bit more on there. But if you're not in the creative field, and I didn't hear anybody talk about their, uh, you know, content designers or uh, uh, graphic designers, UX designers, you want your resume to be pretty standard that people can easily get through and read it. Uh, a couple more things. If you have too much text, uh, underneath a bullet, underneath a job, five to eight bullet points at the most for the most current job you had. When you go back a few jobs, two to three bullet points at the most. Uh, you know, you should not have more than three lines of text together. Your bullet points should only be one or two lines. So too much text, you, you've got to make sure you leave white space for people to see. I've already talked about present and past tense, making sure that you've got things correct. If you're currently working, uh, those make sure those are in present tense and make sure I see this all the time that uh, when I look, you know, somebody is, they just move the resident, move that section down. They forget to change the tense, the past tense. You never want to mention references available upon request. This is really old school. People don't do that anymore. There's no reason to. Uh, not customizing to match the job description, very, very important when you send that generic resume. You know, a recruiter is gonna spend on, well, there was a study on Forbes, I think it said a recruiter spends 7.4 seconds on a resume. So uh, you've gotta catch them quick. Uh, be sure to include your LinkedIn address, very, very important. Now, when you're doing it on a, eight for an ATS system, you wanna make sure that you do not do it as a hot link on your resume, just do it as a text file, because if you have that line underneath it, uh, some of the ATS systems will mess up, will, will mess it up for you. So uh, very important, include your LinkedIn address wherever you do that. So here's a job description. Um, let me see if I can, you know, we talk about trying to, uh, make sure you match a few things. And this is the job description that we use in our meetings on uh, in our resume session that we do on Thursday. But uh, so here's somebody's looking for a business analyst. You want to make sure at the top of your resume that you put down that you're a business analyst. Uh, you want to make sure, let's see here, process, you know, improve processes. Uh, what does it say, improve process? I think I still got stuff here. Uh, but, you know, all these things are in yellow. You know, if they talk about Agile, you want to make sure you list Agile in your, in your area of expertise. If they're talking about Scrum, make sure you talk about Scrum versus, you know, whatever it is. Make sure you're talking about that the keywords are on there. Uh, you don't need to list that you've got Microsoft Office experience like Dan, I have down here at the very, very bottom, unless they list it in their job description, okay? If they list it, you need to list it. If they don't list it, you don't need to list it. So just as a, uh, you know, just, you can, you know, just be aware of that. All right, let me clear those out. All right. Okay, so the next section I wanna talk about is LinkedIn. So you get your resume all ready to go. Now we wanna talk about LinkedIn, things you need to be doing on LinkedIn. Now, I will tell you that the stuff from the resume, the stuff from LinkedIn, the stuff from interviewing that I'm talking about, these are all things that we've talked about over the last six months um, in the sessions that we've been putting on. So I've tried to pull some of the, the best things that I've hear from, hear from people. So number one, you know, so if you get your resume done, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure your LinkedIn profile is current and fully developed. You, I mean, LinkedIn will help you, okay? So it will say, have you done this? Have you done that? put information on there. Let me also just say here, with resumes, with LinkedIn, these are my opinions and this is what I suggest. You ask 10 different people, you're gonna get 15 different answers. You know, so what I recommend on LinkedIn could be different than what other people recommend on LinkedIn, but these are just things that I think that people need to be doing. So, you know, does your profile tell a company how you can help them? You know, do you, are you showing results? So if you spent the time on your resume and you have those details on your resume, putting those details on your LinkedIn profile should be very, very simple. You wanna make sure you're an all-star. 
Okay, and I'll talk about the five things you, or six things you need to be to be an all-star uh, in just a second, but uh, you wanna make sure, and, and LinkedIn will help you do that. So, you know, it'll take you through, have you done this, have you done that? Do you have anything else you can fill out? Let, let that do that, let them do that. Can somebody reach out to you easily? This was very interesting. We had Kurt Vondermatter is uh, doing a LinkedIn presentation. And last week, you know, he spends $20,000 a year on the recruiter package. And he says the first two things he does when he's about to do a search. So when he, you know, he showed us his recruiter package from the back end and the presentation's online if you wanna watch it. And so he had 703 million people that are currently in LinkedIn that he could go view. Uh, so the first thing he clicked on was people that are open to work. So people who have told recruiters that they're open to work. Well, that took it down to 43 million people. And then the next thing he clicked on were people who reply. So people who are answering questions. Uh, and then the third option he would put in is people, he's, and he said the biggest pet peeve that he has with, with people on LinkedIn is that they don't put their contact information in there because he doesn't want to use an in-mail. All right, now, so the reason he said, why do people, you know, he puts in the little link of the option, people who reply on LinkedIn is because if you're not going to reply to an in-mail, he doesn't want to talk to you because he knows that he could send something. You may not see it for months if you even see it at all. So if you're replying on LinkedIn to in-mails and uh, I'll mention that in just a second, but uh, that's a major option for him. And then in his, as we were calling up people and looking at people, he could see in his uh, recruiting panel very easily anybody who put a phone number and email address in their contact in information field. Uh, also, list it in your about section because a lot of, most recruiters will always look at the about section and they would like to reach out to you. They want to pick the phone up. They do not want to use it in mail. So here happens to be, this is my uh, profile, the, my picture. I've taken it one step further and you can see above my picture, I put my email and phone number in my background photo. So I've made it something that makes it easy so people know who I am, how they can get hold of me and be able to reach out to me at any time. Uh, you can do this easily. There's a uh, pro software program called canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. Uh, we did a presentation a couple weeks ago on a Friday morning and you're welcome to go view that on how to use it. Uh, it's really easy. It's free. There's a free version that allows you to do most things. And you can create backgrounds like this very, very, and other more creative backgrounds. So hopefully you don't have that uh, generic green background with the little squealy lines on it. So uh, on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you've customized your URL link, okay? So you go into my profile, you edit your profile name, and you, you know, you want it to be your first name, last name. And if you have to ask, you know, add MBA or add TX for Texas or add, you know, CPA or something, do that. Uh, but you don't want the one that has first name dash second, uh, last name dash a bunch of random numbers and letters. Okay. You want to make sure you customize your URL because that's a very searchable term. You want to make sure that you have a city on there. I see some people in their profiles just put USA. Now, if you're willing to relocate or if you're willing to work remotely, make sure you put that in your about section, you know, make sure that's up there so people know that, you know, where your city is, isn't as important. Uh, so if you live in Prosper, do you want to list, list Prosper or do you want to put Dallas or do you want to put the Dallas Fort Worth area? The best search is you'll get the best, recruiters will finally find you the best if you put the closest metropolitan area. Also, anytime you start typing something into LinkedIn, if it comes up with a default in the, as you're typing, select one of those defaults. Do not create something new because the recruiters do the exact same thing. When they're putting something in the default, they're not going to put in a term that's not already in LinkedIn somewhere. So use the terms that LinkedIn gives you. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a focus statement, that your title statement at the very, very top that, you know, tells people who you are. LinkedIn apparently recently just changed it from 120 to 220 characters. So you can add more characters now and you need to make sure that you have, you know, three or four or five different job titles that you do in that title bar because 
that is a major, that's one of the big search terms right there that will get you found. Uh, always send a personal note with a LinkedIn invite. So here's somebody who sent me a note. He sent me the generic invitation and guess what? I did not link in with that person, okay? You're welcome to connect with me. You, hopefully nobody has sent me a LinkedIn invitation yet. If you have, you need to recall it and then issue it again and send a personal note. If you send me a personal note, I will connect with you. Uh, you can even send a personal note on a cell phone. So this is uh, Dr. Glenn Earl. He no longer looks like this because he's got a big full Christmas Santa beard and uh, due to COVID, he's gone Santa beard beardish. Uh, but if you click on the more or the little three hamburgers, I'm not sure depending if it's an iPhone or a Android you're using, you can click on personalized invite. Every invitation you send out should always be personalized. Let somebody know why you should connect. Because one of the reasons is in three or four years, if you reach out to me and you want to connect with me, or you want to ask me for a favor or reach out to me, I'll be able to go back and go, oh, yeah, I met you at the AE, you know, the AE meeting on October 13th. You know, I'll be able to go back and find that information out because that's what you put in your comment field. Okay, so you want to make sure you complete your profile to uh, achieve all-star status. Uh, to do that, you have to have a current position, a location, an industry, a summary, at least five skills, and you should have like 40 skills or 50 skills if you can, uh, list your education, and you got to have a photo. Oh, I don't want people to see what I look like. Well, you know, put your, you need to get a good looking photo on here. It's actually the next thing on here talking about you've got it. You should have a professional photo. You want to make sure that uh, there's not a hand on your shoulder. You want to make sure you have a plain background behind you. We want to see you. Uh, so, you know, get that, you know, nowadays with iPhones or, you know, with Androids, you should be able to get a decent photo, but you just need to have good lighting. Take a whole bunch of them, find the very best picture you can to post on there. Uh, you want to make sure you have a headline, uh, you know, telling the job title. And so you should have four or five positions and make sure it's, you know, don't tell people you're, you know, that, uh, make sure that the titles that are in that bar are what's in a job description. Okay, very, very important because that's going to be the searchable term. Uh, make sure it's in the same verbiage tense that it would be. Now, I'll go back for just a second. Current position. Well, you don't have a current position right now. So what do you do, you know, to be an all-star? Because you've got to have a current position. Otherwise, you'll be farther down. What I recommend is your current position, so you create a new position, uh, is a job title that you're interested in. Or you could list a couple job titles. The company, I list a phone number. And then underneath it, I would list three or four bullet points that are my achievements, my big talking points that I'm gonna talk about, about the job title that I'm looking for. Then when you get a job, you just delete that, you hide that job, and then you put your new job on there. So that way you always currently have a job. The other option you can also do is you can include a, uh, 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 if you're working, if you're currently, doing community service, if you're currently volunteering someplace, let that be your current job. Just something to be up to. I like the other thing about putting a job title on there because if you put your job title in your title bar and you've put it in the first job, now the same title's up for twice, which may get you a higher chance of getting called up. Uh, let's see here. There's a question that came in. Let me look real quick. Um, Brad asked on the title, should it include the level marketing communication versus marketing communication director? I think both is fine. I think adding the director is fine because that, you know, that's what you're really looking for. Um, I, I don't think that that, I would add the, you know, if you're looking for that kind of position, if you're willing not to be a director and some companies, they may not call that half the position a director. If they're so still searching for marketing communications, that would come up, but I don't really know a job description that would call, the, the job title would be called marketing communications. It would be some other job title. So like I said, you've got to be really, really careful to be common job titles. That's why I say take the default job titles that LinkedIn has. Remember, your resume is not a legal document. Your resume is not a legal document. When you fill out that job application, 
on an ATS system, that is a legal document. So you have to put the correct job title there, but then you can put in parentheses what the common job title would be. I mean, if you were head people person, that's not a job title most people use, but you know, you can use head of, you know, director of HR, you know, in parentheses. All right, uh, make sure that you got open to job opportunities. We had a discussion yesterday at a, a group I was in and we were talking about, do you put that little green banner that says open to work on your photo? And, the, and a lot of people said, well, probably not. They didn't, they didn't like it. Personally, I say, yes, you should do it. You're unemployed. If you want other people to see that you're looking for work, there's nothing wrong with being unemployed. Yeah, 15, 20 years ago when you were unemployed, people didn't want to hang around you because they thought they would catch it. Nowadays, there's so many people who are unemployed, it's not a big deal. And by putting that green circle, by adding that banner around your name, you're letting contacts know who are not recruiters, oh, I didn't know Brad's looking for a job right now. I didn't know Jeff's looking for a job right now. Oh, let me look at his profile. Oh, you know what? Let me reach out to him. Maybe I can, I can help him out. If you don't have that on and you only have let recruiters know, that's, you know, you've cut out a lot of people who possibly can do it. And remember, we, all the recruiters don't necessarily pay $20,000 a year for the package, okay? They may have one or two people in the office that do, but a lot of recruiters just use the free version. A lot of recruiters join the Career DFW LinkedIn group because they know there's 12,000 people that they're now connected to that they can see. So I recommend putting the banner on there. I don't see there's a problem with it. Uh, make sure that in your about section that you're using keywords. If you look at my about section at the bottom of my section, you'll see that I have listed a whole bunch of keywords that would be searchable terms. I've heard from experts that you need to have your keywords on your profile three to five times. So, uh, you know, you have it once in your job title, once in your summary section, maybe two or three times in your different positions, that, in different jobs that uh, you've had. Make sure those things are in there. All right, on the experience section, uh, like I said before, if you have an unusual title, please put in what the common title would be for that, you know, in parentheses, just, you know, add that on there. Make it easy. Uh, one of the things that I just, and I noticed this Tuesday or last Tuesday when uh, Kurt was doing it on the recruiting package is that he would, you know, I've heard that on search terms, you should not put anything like if you were going to search on if, if, but because I have the open paren on there that it wouldn't search it because it would be looking for a paren if, not just if. Um, so I've always heard that you should leave a space before and after, but yet when I was looking at when Kurt, I didn't mention this, but I, when I was watching his uh, presentation, when he was doing search terms and he, you know, when he puts a search term in and he looks at somebody, you're, that search term pops up on the person's profile every place and he can see it. And even if it had parens or some other kind of thing around, uh, it was still being searched. So just take it, you know, I would be real careful about doing that if you're going to put something on parentheses, maybe put a space before and after. It'll look a little funny, but that way you can make sure that it's being searched. Uh, make sure your education award certificates, professional development, put that information on there. To me, I, I think you can't have too little information on LinkedIn. Uh, the more to me, more the better. Uh, skills, you, sh you can have up to 50. Uh, you should pick your top three skills and make sure that that's pinned to the very, very top and then go through and select things. Now, I understand recently they just changed this again in the skill section. It will automatically alphabetize them for you, which is great because it puts them in, a, I think it, it makes it easy for people to read through to be able to see it that way. But, uh, you know, go through, pick out skills that you're doing, uh, skills that you should be, and if need be, Go check out other people's profiles and look what skills they have and go, oh yeah, I have that too because I didn't see that one. I didn't think about typing that one in there. So check those out because skills, are, that's a major search uh, ability. And then if you have a couple recommendations, please try to get a recommendations. Don't do the tit for tat thing, but try to get 
if you have, uh, you know, try to get a couple recommendations from coworkers and or former bosses. Uh, if you've got old, old uh, reviews that a boss has written in the past, you know, I've taken the review, I put a put together a paragraph, I've sent it to somebody going, hey, John, this is what you recommended when we worked at so-and-so, this was what you wrote in your, in your uh, review. Would you mind, you know, putting this in a review? Please feel free to modify it however you'd like, but at least you've told them, here's what you've said in the past, and you've given somebody an opportunity to just cut and paste and put it into their uh, review for you. Uh, a couple uh, privacy settings that you need to be very careful of. Uh, number one, you want to make sure you turn off viewers of this profile also viewed. Uh, if you go to LinkedIn, sometimes you'll look at somebody and then off to the right hand side, you know, people, you know, here are people just like Jeff. Here are people doing things just like Jeff. Why do you want to advertise? You want to make sure that when you're doing this, you're only, you know, that you're not promoting other people who do the same thing you do. Uh, we sort of talked about this. Make sure you turn on, let recruiters know that you're open to opportunities. Uh, I know Craig mentioned for those people who are still employed but out looking, you know, you can't put the banner on for obvious reasons, but uh, please make sure you let recruiters know that you're looking. And it just, yeah, I mean, otherwise you're not going to be found. You just won't be found if you don't do that. Uh, here's a really important tip, and I found this very interesting. Once again, something I learned uh, seeing the recruiting package. If you're applying for a job at a company, make sure you follow that company because one of the uh, one of the things that pops up. So when we were doing searches last week, Kurt would would uh, you know do something. He could see that you know of the uh, 1,200 people that were qualified or that popped up in LinkedIn, he could see that 87 of those people followed the company that he's looking for. So that's another, uh, another thing just to make sure you do. So be sure to follow any company that you're interested in or that you've applied to, because it will, uh, when, if they're using LinkedIn to look you up or search they'll, in a recruiting package, it will help you. All right, so uh, there's a few things here as far as, um, you know, how often should you be on LinkedIn? You know, if you listen to Terry Sullivan, Terry Sullivan says 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day is all you should do on LinkedIn. Uh, and when you get on LinkedIn, you need to post, share, and like things. Uh, so what earns you the most points if you post something? And he recommends you post something once a week. Uh, it can be something you found on Forbes or something in the newspaper or whatever. Find an article and post it. Comment on it. Um, you know, there's, it's even suggested if you use something like canva.com, don't use the generic whatever link that it pulls in. Come up with your own picture that talks about whatever it is you're posting. Spend a few minutes and just do that. Maybe you do that on the weekends, whatever. But posting gets you the most points. If you share with a comment, so you take something, you see somebody else's post and you comment on it, that will get you the next amount of points. If you just share something with no comment, that gets you least points. And then if you just like something, that's gonna get you the, the very smallest number of points, okay? So activity, very, very important. So, you know, please try to, you know, like or share something, at least on a daily basis, find something to like or share. Uh, always be sure to reply to a LinkedIn in-mail or connection request. Every time you get something from LinkedIn, because this shows activities. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, one of the features Kurt put, turns on when he recruits for somebody is to see, does this person reply? Does this person respond in LinkedIn? So this will help move you up. And I had no idea this was something, and uh, it was, it was an, uh, to me, it was the eye-opening thing that I learned that day. All right, so I have a question for everybody. If you open up your uh, chat box, uh, open up the uh, group chat box and in the chat box, I'd like you to put how much time have you spent on your resume? Just put down a number of hours. Okay, 10, 150, 80, 5, 12, 12, 8, 140, 20, 5 to 10, 30. Great. 
All right, so thank you for that. Question number one. Question number two is, how much time have you practiced interviewing? So how many hours have you practiced interviewing? Not doing a real interview, but just practicing interviewing. I'll give David uh, kudos for practicing for 40 hours. That's really great. So, you know, probably people spend a lot less time interviewing. So this is what I want to talk about now. This is the third section I want to talk about interviewing. Uh, and this will wrap up what I want to talk about today. So you've got to be prepared for an interview. So, you know, you've got your resume done. You've gotten your LinkedIn profile ready to go. You're now waiting for that phone call or email to come in. So you know, every bullet point on your resume should have a story. So if you have your 10 or 15 page master resume, you should write down a story about that bullet point. Now, some people, I, I you know, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can just have a big Word document and you put them all in a big binder. And so this is everything and you can flip through. Uh, I like, uh, I've heard somebody say they do it on index cards. And that way, uh, you know, they can just pull out the index cards that are important for this interview and they can rehearse. But you write down just a few things about something that will remind you what is it about it. And by writing it down, and that's why I like handwriting on an index card versus typing. When you handwrite something, that connection with your brain helps, will help you remember it a lot better than sitting there typing it out. Uh, there's lots of different ways. There's a star method and then SARS and then I've heard cars and then the rats. Uh, I like the re, uh, raw method where you do the result. Here is the action I took and this is why we had to do it. This is the, the method I like. Like I said, there's lots of different ways, but the whole key is you wanna make sure that there are, uh, that you've written down just some keywords to remind you, well, here's why this bullet points on me, on here. Here's how we got to it. This is the success I had. Here's my story. And then most, most important, you wanna keep your answers to 60 to 90 seconds. And now I'm even hearing 50 to 60 seconds maximum because if you go 90 seconds or two minutes with a story and you only have a half hour, what are you gonna get eight or 10 stories in? You're not gonna get a lot of time in to answer questions. So the shorter you can keep it, the better. And you can always ask, would you like to hear more details? Or would you like to know more? Or did I answer your question? Um, be prepared for the following questions. This is gonna happen. Almost every of you is gonna ask you, why do you wanna work here? There's a recruiter who uh, spoke to our group right before COVID started. And she says, I ask everybody I talk to, why do you want to work here? And if they don't have a good answer, they don't get moved on to the next level. And she's the first, that's, she's the, she's the gatekeeper into the company. So you've got to be prepared to answer that question. And uh, number two, how much did you make at your last job? So this is a salary question. You know, uh, it's not important that, you know, what you made your last job and what you're making now is, is two different things. The responsibilities are different, but you know, it's the old uh, table, the old tennis thing about whoever, whoever says the number first loses. But uh, the answer I like, if you want to have fun, I love Steve Zipkoff's answer. Well, my manufacturer suggested retail price is $125,000 a year. Now I can't work for free. I'm sure that whatever, you know, I'm sure you, we can come up with something that's fair and equitable. So that's the fun answer. Uh, you know, the other answer would be as well, I've done some research and according to salary.com or the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, uh, this job title in this market should make somewhere between 90 and $140,000 a year. I'm sure that whatever you're going to pay is fair and equitable. Do you have a range? So by giving a range, you know, you should be set, but be, be prepared for that salary question. And why'd you leave your last job? You know, it's easy if you were COVID or you got laid off. My daughter was laid off from IBM with 25,000 other people. So that's an easy answer. But, uh, you know, if there was something else, uh, you've got to, um, you just have to be careful. So just be prepared before you go into an interview, have these answers ready to go. Uh, most interviews 
will all lead with, well, tell me about yourself, okay? This is your two minute story. Now there's an alternative that we use in the practice interview team that I'll say, well, walk me through your resume. That's the exact same thing as tell me about yourself. And tell me about yourself has nothing to do with your family and what you do outside of your job search. You wanna keep it job related. So I like this method. The first 15 seconds you start with your professional training. I have a MBA or I have a bachelor's of uh, science degree, whatever. Uh, I spent three years, I spent four years in the military. Uh, I speak three different languages, uh, whatever. That's the first part of your, of your talk. The second part is two or three relevant areas. Well, when I was looking at your, you know, when I was looking at your profile or looking at the job description, I see you're looking for somebody who can do this and this and this. And I've done a few of these things uh, over the years. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm very excited about being here. And, I, you know, I hope you have an opportunity to talk about those things. And then you want to spend the last 60 seconds uh, going over your skills, abilities, and knowledge and achievements that, you know, would, that would make you fit into the, into the company. So that's sort of what I recommend. And this is something you should have prepared, ready to go before you go in. So once again, these are those being prepared before you get into the interview. Don't wait until you go to the interview and have to try to come up with that answer. Um, I love this in the practice interview team. We had one gentleman, his name is Ron, and Ron Layton would always say, you know, you've got to have 10 plus one. 10 plus one, have 10 questions ready to go. And uh, the uh, plus one is to make sure at the very, very bottom is to ask for the job. And so our, the recommendation was is that you have 10 questions I think I like them handwritten. Uh, so what I say is if you have a portfolio, you open the portfolio up and you say, it's okay if I take some notes or whatever. The top half of that portfolio page is blank. The bottom half has, the bottom 11 lines has your 10 questions that you want to ask, hopefully in order that's important. And the last one is remind at the very, very bottom, uh, you know, to ask for the job to remind you what the next step is. And the goal is during the interview to try to ask some of those questions. Try to ask him, you know, the goal should be to ask five of those questions. So if you can do that, uh, you're turning it into more of a conversation. And I love the fact, and you know, when I've done, I, I work on the practice interview team and I help interview candidates, uh, when a candidate will go and if I ask a question or they ask a question, they'll go and they'll check it off. It's like, I like seeing that because it shows they prepared and they've thought about what's happening. All right, uh, being prepared for a video interview, Skype, Google Hangout, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever it is you're using, uh, Microsoft Team, whatever it is, you want to make sure you think about the camera angle. Uh, my, cam my camera is hopefully right on my eye, you know, eye line. You see some people whose cameras are way down low. Uh, if need be, you need to, get, I have a, uh, my second computer actually has a, uh, uh, I have a stand for it. So my laptop is actually sitting up. So it gets my camera as high up as I can. Uh, I know some people have a camera that's like buried at the very bottom of your laptop screen. So like when you see somebody typing, it's like this. That's very annoying. Uh, you probably should get a remote camera or get a camera on a stand so that that, so that your ang if you can make it look like you can. If you ever notice, if you watch the news, you'll see some news reporters when they're interviewing somebody on a, uh, for a news story, they'll have their laptop sitting up on a bunch of books just to get it up to a higher level. Uh, what's the sound like? Uh, do you use a headset? I'm using, I'm using uh, earphones only because my kids are home this week and uh, I don't want them, they don't need, they don't want to hear everything else that we all talk about. So they're having to listen to my voice right now, but they don't have to, when I'm just watching other seminars, they don't want to hear everything. So that's why this is on. Um, you know, what's in your background? We've talked about that already. Be very aware of that. Here's a great story. Uh, it's actually in the book. Uh, I guess Matt can confirm it's in the book. Uh, there, was a there was a time, this gentleman, this was years ago, probably 15 years ago, back when this was first starting and you had the old Logitech camera uh, the guy was set up in his den, and he was set up in the corner of his den, and behind him, you could see the rest of the room, and I guess the kitchen was off the one way, the bedrooms were off the other way, and all of a sudden, during the interview, the two guys who were interviewing him started giggling and said, well, we're going to have to start this interview over again, and the guy was like, 
well, why? Well, your wife just walked by without any clothes on. So, you know, you've got to be aware of what's behind you. You've got to be aware of who else is in the house. Uh, make sure your cell phone's on silent. I've got my cell phone on silent. I've gotten a couple text messages already this morning, but I'll deal with that when I'm done here. Uh, practice, 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 practice. Everybody can get a free Zoom account. So you can Zoom one-on-one -on -one with somebody and practice. Well, what's in my background? You know, does this look good? Do you want to change backgrounds? You know, I've got about like 15 or 20 backgrounds that I can change. Uh, I'm using the Zoom background if your computer is strong enough to handle it. So just, you know, practice now. Make sure that you can, you know, do this correctly. Um, when you're interviewing, uh, so this is sort of follow-up, you know, sort of towards the end of the interview. You want to make sure what's the next step going to be. Uh, uh, you know, where do we move from here? You know, maybe suggest a follow-up call. And then if you suggest a follow-up call and like, well, I'll call you next Monday, would three o'clock be okay? You call them Monday at three o'clock. If you confirm, you do that. If you do happen to leave a message on their voicemail, the message should be, well, sorry, I missed you today. Really was excited about talking to you last week. Uh, since I, I'll, I'll try you again Thursday at two. You call them Thursday at two. If you don't get their voicemail again, you leave them another message. Well, I'll call you next Tuesday at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. So, you know, by doing that and by following up, I know there's some sales jobs and some jobs, they're, the person, the interviewer purposely does that because they want to see if you're going to follow up, if you have that drive as a salesperson to make sure that you do follow up and, and stick to what you do. You know, you keep bugging them until they get a restraining order. Uh, be sure to express uh, even greater interest in the position as you're towards the end. You want to follow up, you know, at the beginning, you sort of, you know, I'm really excited about being here. I, you know, this is what I think you're looking for. Now, you know, in your closing statement, you know, you understand what the job is. Hopefully you've got a little bit better understanding. You're, you know, I'm really glad you called. I'm really excited. I think this would be a great opportunity for the two of us. I know I can help your company. Um, so, you know, make sure you, you come up with, have a statement ready to go at the end. Um, and then be asked, you know, what's the next step? Ask for the job. Um, there was a gentleman uh, in the pit crew who once, uh, as he walked in, you know, we saw there was an empty desk on the way into the interview room. He, as uh, he's in the interview room at the end, he said, well, you know, I saw that empty desk out there. Would that be my desk? I'm ready to start on Monday. And, you know, he was just like, yeah, let's do this. You know, let's stop the interviewing process. Let's go ahead and get this going here. So if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. Okay. You got to ask for what you want. All right. A couple of interview mistakes that we happen to see a lot. Number one is people talk too much or too little. Um, you know, spending too much time talking about the situation. If you, you know, that's why I don't like the star method because people will tend to talk, well, here's what the situation, this is what we're having to do, blah, 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 blah. You get wandering off into the weeds, not important. That's why if you start off with a result, that's the key. That's what people want to hear. So I've had this so many times in a practice interview, you, you ask them for a story, they never tell you the result. And I have to go, so what was the result? Was the project successful? Did you earn money? Did whatever. So, you know, by telling the result first, I think is much, much better. Uh, and sometimes an interviewer will just shut up and just like sit there and like, and you'll feel like, uh oh, it's silent. I better be, I better talk some more. Just ask, did I answer your question? Or you can also say, well, would you like me to tell you a time about when I did X, Y, and Z? So you lead to the next story that you'd like to tell because you know you have some success stories you'd like to do. Be very careful about talking in generalities because uh, people can, they'll read that that you don't really know what you're talking about. Be specific, mention metrics, you know, be sure to put in the context for the interviewer so that they can understand what it is. It's going to be different talking to the hiring, talking to a recruiter versus a hiring manager versus a technical interview. So, you know, you just need to know what your audience is. Uh, you never want to talk, you know, you're mishandling a negative oriented question. Well, what was the worst thing about working at your last job? What, what didn't you like about working for your, you know, what was one thing you didn't like about working for your previous boss? You want to be very, very careful about that because you never want to share negative information. It always needs to be a learning experience. It needs to be a positive kind of event. 
Um, forgetting to take credit. You want to make sure that it's what, you know, you talk about the actions that, well, this is what our group did, or this is what we did. What did you do? We are not interviewing we, we're interviewing you. So make sure you talk about I, or these were my responsibilities in the group. Make sure you talk about that. Uh, do not talk negatively about a previous job, coworker, or boss. Uh, you never know who they know. And if you talk negative about them, the recruiter is going to go, well, they may talk negative about me. So just be very careful about that. If you're in a panel interview, make sure you spread around your, you know, your looks. Okay. So don't just, if the person, if one person asks you a question, don't focus on that one person during the answer. Be sure to every sentence you go to this person and then this person and then this person, you know, go person to person to person to make it, uh, you know, best thing to do is by sentence if you can, so that you're sharing your answer with everybody. If you have not done a practice interview, and if you'd like to do a practice interview, you are welcome to reach out to the Dallas Pit Crew. Uh, they are meeting online via Zoom. They're now doing interviews every day of the week. Uh, if you would send them a request today, they would schedule something for Thursday or Friday at this point. They usually want a couple of days to organize. Uh, if you've conducted interviews and you'd like to be an interviewer, they are looking for people to do, to be on the interview side also. They usually do three people interviewing one person. Uh, you can just email dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. This is, it's fabulous. I mean, it is an unbelievable session. So if you've not done that, please consider uh, doing that. All right, uh, just a couple bonus things. I'm just gonna share one bonus tip here real quick and I'll flip through a bunch of them real fast, but just one thing I do wanna share is visit our Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, this is the 126th presentation or workshop that I've done since COVID started. Uh, currently I have over 100 workshops have been recorded. This will be the 101st, I think. Uh, this will be up on the YouTube channel this afternoon. As I mentioned before, every Tuesday we do a LinkedIn presentation. Every Wednesday at one o'clock we do an interview session. Every Thursday we do a resume session. Uh, the Friday North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group with all those speakers are there every Friday at 930. And then uh, the Frisco Career Transition Workshop, I'm part of that now. We're recording all those and all those are up on the Career USA YouTube channel so you can go back and look at anything. Here's what the YouTube channel happens to look like, Career USA YouTube channel. The best, the, the easy thing to do is if you click where the green arrow is where it says playlist, up will come at the bottom of the screen what you see, the seven different playlists. I just did this from yesterday. And if you click underneath each, so, so if you were to click on the actual little screen you see there, so if you, if you were to click like right up here, it will start playing the first video. You don't want to do that. But what you want to do is you want to click underneath here where it says view full playlist and then up will come all the sessions and what's going on. So you can see if you want to find something about how to ask questions or building rapport with the interviewer or demonstrating enthusiasm, you can find the details of all the, uh, of the titles of all the sessions that are on there. So, uh, you know, I encourage people to, uh, you know, this data, the stuff's there. Uh, if you've got a question, if you're not sure about how to do something, uh, you know, there, I've got topics. If you need help, let me know. I can always guide you in the right direction. All right. I'm almost out of time here, so I'm going to skip these right here. So I'd like to just remember everybody, uh, just please remember if you'll join the Career FW and or Career USA LinkedIn groups, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, Career FW and Career USA survives on donations. Uh, proceeds from the book. I know we've sold some books on Amazon. Uh, and please consider maybe making a donation when you land your next great opportunity. If your company offers matching donations, please uh, let me know. You know, please allow your donation to double in value. Uh, that would be really appreciated. Uh, if you're looking for a speaker at another group, I'm willing to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. Um, here's my contact information. When I'm in person, I sell the book for uh, $10 a person. If you want to drive by, throw ten dollars out your window. I'll throw a book in your window, or I'll try to throw it in like the pizza box on Domino's, as long as your window's uh, rolled down. Uh, otherwise, it's on Amazon for fifteen bucks. And I appreciate the time. Thank you very much, Brian, for inviting me. And uh, if there's anything else I can do to help anybody, please reach out to me. 
very comprehensive. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you know, that's a whole lot of information on a lot of different topics. So, uh, and I imagine that since you drilled down on these in those um, individual meetings that are more specific, um, you get a lot more information. So, we do. Um, I don't know. Do we have any questions or we have any, any comments?